We praise God from whom all of our blessings flow. Oh, yeah. I brought some men's flyers. This is um, Health Month from all the men, so we want to really um, check that out and get checked out. Amen. All right. But I don't need a mic. I don't think I think uh, I think I can do it. We have do I need a mic? Well, I can hear thank you. Amen. 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 All that good carrying on, we could have had a little more devotion. And I see my friend is in the house, so I'm going to really move out of the way. Amen. To the able and capable pastor of this church, my friend and brother, Pastor Davis, Lady Davis, and to Emeritus Pastor Godbo, Lady Godbo, to our illustrious moderator, can you celebrate with me the person of the moderator Michael D. Small? Amen. Lady Small, can you celebrate Lady Small? Amen. Amen. Ushers, we do have a handout here uh, for us tonight as we talk about luster. Amen. Spirit of the living God is here. We've already prayed. My pastor taught me a long time ago. Don't show up praying. You should have prayed before you showed up. So we, we done prayed. We're going to get right into it. We have 15 minutes, and that's not enough time, but we're going to fit in here as much as we can. If you try to read along with me uh, to check my spelling and the like, uh, you can do so. But I want to let you know we're going to say some things about this tremendous thing that we've been hearing about for several years, right? Yeah. And there's a reason why we keep hearing about it. We're like uh, the new pastor who came to a church and uh, he was preaching on Revelation. And he was preaching on the book of Revelation uh, month after month, week after week. And he got, he got caught up in the supermarket with uh, one of the deacons of the church. They said, Brother Pastor, we thought you were going to be a great preacher and going to preach all of the articles of faith and through the 66 books, 39 for history, 27 for instruction, and we thought you were going to preach through the poetic books and all that. But you've been preaching in Revelation. You just won't leave Revelation. And um, he said, he said, why won't you preach anything else? He said, well, when they get Revelation, then I'll, I'll change my message. And I think that's how we feel about luster. Uh, when we get it, we might be able to change and be shining bright for God. Amen? And so luster uh, to our, I acknowledge our emeritus um, moderator also of this of this central area, moderator God Bow. Amen. Life, help me say life, understanding, structure, transparency, excitement, respect. Amen. Good evening, faith family. We are blessed to see another day. I asked my iPhone to Google for me the word luster this morning. The definition came back as a gentle sheen or a soft glow, especially that of a partly reflect reflective surface. Google also gave me some portraits, some pictures, some illustrations of pottery and ceramics that had been given an iridescent glaze to create luster. Somebody say luster. Luster is glossy. Luster is shiny. Luster has reflective capabilities. Luster then is exciting and inviting. Luster is attracting and captivating. Let me pause for the cause to tell you men, if you really want your honey to smile, you got to give her something that shine. Yeah. Amen. When they get stuff that shine, yeah. they have a way of smiling yeah. because of the, the glow that is upon that piece of jewelry. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So it's exciting. And notice here, and I pulled for the text when I thought about those pots of clay, such as Yolanda, I thought about those pots of clay, it automatically downloaded 2 Corinthians chapter 4 into my spirit. And, and verse 6 and 7 says, For God who hath let sh the light shine our darkness has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 
But we have this treasure in jars of clay yes. to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and yes. not to us. Oh, wow, yeah. Paul. Let me say parenthetically that you need to read, and a good read is 2 Corinthians, the fourth and fifth chapter. Yeah. As we deal with ourselves and ministry yeah. in this a post-pandemic time schedule of life, we need to read those two chapters to kind of reset who we are in Christ Jesus. He went back to the origin of the source of light in the Genesis account of God's creation. It is always a good thing to rediscover the origin of what we are doing for God and how we are doing it for God. Sometimes we can get so busy, district family, state family, church family, that we forget we're doing it for the Lord. Amen. We're so busy making sure we get our accolades and cross our T's and our spiritual eyes that we forget about the one who's standing at the door waiting for his hug and his kiss. Can I ask you this morning, did you give God his first? Did you give God his adoration, his glory, his salute? in your celebration. Come on, somebody. Paul writes to the church at Corinth concerning the light and illumination of the gospel. The gospel has luster that will never fade, erode, or dim. The gospel is still good news, God's latest update. The gospel is still that illumination which draws the world's hearts away from the darkness of sin toward the light of Christ. I think Google got it right. Theologically, they naturally gave me pictures of pottery and clay. And my Aunt Mary Lizzie was here who taught this course for many years right in her basement. She was saying some things about pottery that you can understand that brings luster to the forefront and the surface of what we're talking about. Paul goes on to speak of the light of the gospel, the light of the gospel, the light of the gospel, the light of the gospel uh, placed in jars or pottery. The light in pottery. The light in, I like to call them vulnerable vaults. You know, you've got your favorite pottery that if anybody drop it, All right you're not going to be smiling right now. Right. I've got pottery from my great, great, great grandmother that is near 100 years old that she did with her own hands. Yes. And that pottery, you ain't never saw it before <laughs> because I don't want to break it or disrupt it. All right. But in and of itself, all of those vaults or those containers are vulnerable. Yeah. All you got to do is drop it yeah. in order to see how vulnerable it is. I, I tickled Pastor Nance as he's going to, uh, to Virginia on vacation. I said, man, I got to read this part for you. I know you're with the family. I said, but I got to read this. Notice, if you are familiar with ceramics and pottery, then you know that there is a particular process which gives the beauty and the luster of the final piece. There are basically six steps. And did you not know, brother moderator, that the six steps correlate with the six letters of luster? Six is the number of man. You can't have seven. That belongs to God. And so we as men and women and human beings have to grapple with what we're supposed to do being caught up in this body. Yet carrying the light of the gospel. Just when you wanted to curse somebody else out, the light popped up. I, I know a preacher coming. Just when you wanted to say, I quit, the light popped up. And every now and then we are reminded, McGee, that we're only human. Okay. Well, listen to this. The six it blew my mind, Margaret. It blew my mind. Because, because it, it says, first of all, Auntie Mary Lizzie would tell me there must be some milling and some mining. Yeah, you said life, life, 
milling and mining. It has to come from a natural source where life exists. In other words, we've got to deal with who we have. Oftentimes I tell young pastors, I've been a pastor for 31 years, don't preach to the church you want, preach to the church you got. Y'all get that when you get home. Get that when you get home. Oh, say, we got too many old folk, preach to the old folk. Amen. We got too many young folk, preach to the young folk. We got too many couples, singles, preach to them. Don't preach to who you want on the Word Network, preach to who you got. If you preach to who you got, God will give you a new schedule. Listen, listen. Um, the, 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 the mining in the mill is three weeks of L. Step two, I got to quit. I got four minutes. Uh, uh, the batching. The batching. The batching. I was an art student back in 1986 through 88. And then in school, we had to take pottery, we had to take clay. I hated that class. I was terrible. I mean, well, they gave me all this clay. You had to beat it up and stump it and mill it. And then you had to put the water in it. You had to fix it. And you had to make sure you pull out all of the uh, inadequacies and all of the uh, properties that did not allow it to do what it needed to do. Uh, there must be some batching. That's what we're doing when we come together in luster. Right. Understanding. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Understanding. Yeah. And then three, there must be some forming. That's what the moderator is saying. There's got to be some structure. Right. Hey, I know you are in the post-pandemic and you just got all the great ideas for the pastor of what to do. God done dropped this great vision in your spirit and done told you, listen, but pastor, I see some stuff and I think we ought to do it this way. No, the pastor is doing what he's doing because there's some structure. Yeah. I got to keep going. Yeah. See, I like this because step four is drying and when you dry it it's in order to inspect it and that drying speaks of that word T uh, which is transparency <sighs> transparency being able to have an honest presentation and an honest report I'll leave that right where it's at step five is glazing I know you wanted me to get to that one because glazing is exciting. Man, I tell you, you hang in the process of dealing with the dirty clay with the scent and the stench. But once it dried and you were able to put those colors on there, begin to bring a glaze on it in order to bring some excitement about it. That's what God did for us in our lives. I know you say Jones was ex this and Jones was ex that. He's all right, but he's okay, but some butts and some exes in your life that God twisted into a cross because he was glazing your life and whenever we come to church I don't wait for folk to get excited no more I'm already excited when I leave home because I know if it had not been for God he didn't have to use me, he didn't have to change me he didn't have to save me some of our worst hurt has happened in church but thank God for the glaze. Come on, somebody. You, you don't stop at Dunkin' Donuts to get a dry, ugly donut. You have a way of pulling up and say, give me a one with some glaze on it. That's exciting, y'all. And, and sometimes, Dr. McGee, they say it don't take all of that, but it does take all of that. If folk knew the hell you've been through, they will understand why you shout and you don't care who cares and who's looking and who's laughing. Because he glazed you. Oh, I can quit right there. But I got to finish this. Please let me finish it. Step six is appreciate. Oh, my God. Respect. Appreciation. Appreciation. Just appreciate it. Don't you appreciate the moderator? He's a pandemic moderator, isn't he? He dealt with things in a pandemic. He never knew. His, all his study, all of his preparation, perspiration, all of his vacillation and meditation did not prepare him for this pandemic. Appreciate you. I know about your story. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I know where you come from. I appreciate you. And sometimes, sometimes, we get upset with seeing the same folk. 
Right. What you gonna do when you get to heaven? Yeah. McGee gonna be still there? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Sister Davis gonna be up there shouting and singing. She gonna be there. Yeah. Big O gonna be there. Yeah. We got to learn how to appreciate. Yeah. Well, notice this. Paul's image of God's treasure of jars of clay was in the image of jars which are useful and valuable for life. The pottery or jars that Paul's of Paul's day, however, became worn and warped over time. They began cracks and breaks. They began to lack the ability to keep things, and they became useless. Once becoming useless, they were thrown back to the earth to their original states. Notice what he says. We are afflicted in every way, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our bodies. Paul encourages us that basically while the luster of God's gospel never wears out, and while we as believers become worn and weary through the various vicissitudes of life, we are not throwaways. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But we are preserved for a purpose. Right. Hey, oh, why did you leave I me here? I, I had a pastor friend who died. Yeah. Why did you leave me here? Rodney Jones and I slept in the same bed, kicked the same kickball, ran the same streets of 6th Street down in Market Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. But you took him the other day. We're the same. church is a good read to share some key points for the church. Remember our biblical hope. Yeah. Wait for the cultural change. Don't try to make it. Don't try to push it. Don't try to force it. Wait. Wait. Yeah. I was told as a young husband, when your wife turned 40, there's going to be some changes. Uh, she don't want to do some stuff. Let her do it. She went to school. She finished school, top of her class. Right. Went in that field and said, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Listen, Woo! your children don't pay you when they're young. Now she's doing a great job downtown with, with Earl Turner. She changed her whole shift on me. Right. You can't force a cultural change. You got to wait on it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the same room at the same time. Don't worry about the millennials, the Zens. Don't worry about Malcolm X, the X Men, the X, the X Men, <laughs> or the Boo Boo Babies, the Baby Boomers. The cultural change will come. We have to keep letting the light shine. But then, watch this. Make visible actions. Collaborate with positive allies. Possess traits of clear communication. Accept your losses. Accept your losses. Accept your losses. The black hair ain't there no more except the fact that it's white. Wear the white. Amen, somebody. Don't cut it off. Just wear it. Accept your losses. Align with the future. And I know you see that trophy on there. The Larry O'Brien trophy. I got to go because Steph Curry and Draymond Green is going to try to take out the Boston Celtics. One thing about this trophy, brother moderator, one day when we're all standing in glory, God is presenting his trophies. It's going to look something like even better than that. It's going to have a luster on it that will never fade away. Because everybody's trying to get the championship ring. Both the ring and the trophy are full of splendor and luster. The winning team share in the possession of that trophy. You see them hugging that trophy, kissing that trophy, caressing the trophy. You see them holding it up, passing it from hand to hand. But one thing about the trophy, no matter what they do to it, the luster doesn't ever fade. And the next team is fighting the next year, spending millions and billions of dollars for the trophy. Well, now if the NBA can do that, Hey! 
Let's give God a hand. Have a great time.